Obviously, we've been watching uh, the different conferences and unfortunately for the Conservative Party, just a month after Liz Truss was appointed as your leader, there were some uh, divisions on show. Do you think uh, those will end now that we're heading back to Parliament and back to a very full agenda? I, I wish I could say they would, Arlene. Uh, but good, good, to, good to join you, by the way. Um, but I... I don't quite see it happen. I mean, I, I, I went up to Birmingham for part of the conference and the mood amongst Conservative MPs to whom I spoke was pretty gloomy. And people are looking at the opinion polls. Um, they're obviously drawing conclusions from those about their own chances of survival at the next election. Next election was always going to be very tough. The, the Conservatives would have been in office for perhaps 14 years by the time we go to the polls. But I don't think it's an unwinnable one. Well, well I think... Um, uh, Liz Truss and her cabinet colleagues have to do is to start by um, trying to show that the cabinet will stick together because certainly at Birmingham was too too much um, briefing by one cabinet minister against another cabinet minister throughout the conference. Secondly, they've got to find a way to to have an economic strategy that both reassures the international market, you know, the people who lend us the money um, to keep us going. Uh, but at the same time, it's credible in Parliament. There's no point about you know, promising uh, something to the market that relies on legislation for cuts in public spending, say, that you, you, you can't get a majority for in the House of Commons. And uh, that's a tall order. Um, but I, uh, I wish the Prime Minister well. And I it, it seems to me that that is what she needs to focus on. It, it's that economic strategy that is credible with the market and credible in Parliament. Well, you will know, David, better than many people I speak to that this uh, being Prime Minister is a juggling act. And uh, she left um, Birmingham to go to that European summit. And as former mm. Europe Minister, you must have been pleased to see the rapprochement that happened there and the fact that there seems to be better mood music now uh, between the different players. I, I was delighted that, that the Prime Minister decided to go to the, the Prague meeting. And I've been further encouraged today when it's come out that the United Kingdom is going to take part in something called PESCO. It's an, an EU scheme that allows um, the, the easy transfer and mobility of troops and military equipment across the whole of Europe. The US and Norway, our fellow NATO members, were already part of this scheme. We'd held back. We've now gone in. That seems to be sensible, pragmatic. It's it's not some betrayal of Brexit. I mean, no secret, I, I, I was an ardent Remainer and I, I, I still haven't changed my mind, but, but the decision was taken. The people voted and that decision had to be accepted in a democracy. The question now is outside the EU, how do we establish the best possible relationship with the other democracies uh, of our own continent to meet the challenges that we all face, the challenge from Russian aggression in Ukraine and that Russian threat to all democracies in Europe, the challenge of energy security, the challenge of climate change. Um, and I think that the both Liz Truss's action in going to Prague, but also the, the sort of language that's been coming from her and from James Cleverly, the foreign secretary, is a very big improvement, I think, in some of the negative rhetoric we've had in the past. And I was very struck at Birmingham. I talked to a number of ambassadors from EU member countries, and they told me that they had noticed a very distinct change in the tone of the language being used by senior British cabinet ministers about how they now wanted to establish a new, a different sort of constructive partnership, working relationship uh, in all our interests uh, amongst the European democracies.